Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to this feminine platform and welcome back to this channel. And if you are new here, ladies, lurkers, and ear hustlers, welcome. So I wanted to share my womanhood thoughts and to offer some feminine perspective on this entire second and first hand embarrassment called Mr. Jason Hamburglar Whitlock and this very unfortunate police killing situation that from a feminine point of view needs to be addressed and spoken on and given clarity because ladies and lurkers, these unwarranted and overgeneralized attacks on black women by wimpy men are not masculine leadership at all. And the constant trolling and the constant badgering and the blame shifting and the devaluation that is being projected onto black women by toxic, insecure male and female voices. But in this case, a male's voice is not only very harming and very played to the left, but it is also a red flag sign of how easy it is for a male clown to be the face of performative masculinity that seeks to publicly tear black women down with nothing but hostility and contempt and passive aggressive loathing. And no, not all black women are rainbows and sunshine, but that doesn't mean that they deserve to constantly be hung out to dry or that they deserve to be the fall guy for all things dysfunctional. And I also find it very interesting how this blame game conversation has gotten so wild around single motherhood and around baby mama culture in Jason's words, because this conversation is starting to become a very weird virtue signaling catch all phrase for all things related to black dysfunction in ways that are intentionally lacking nuance and that are purposely being conflated and toxically distorted to malign and to further devalue and disrespect black women by both broken black men and by proxy broken black pygmishas. But for those of you who don't know, the sunken place cornball and the embittered sports analyst and louse, Mr. Jason Whitlock, decided to further feed off of the sickness of the gender divide and decided to further fan the flames of hostility and to spread the herd a little thicker by pulling a cheap shot manosphere stunt at black women by playing the A, B, C, D mental gymnastics game of accusing, blaming, criticizing, and deflecting or denying, and by proxy, politicizing the unspeakable tragedy of Mr. Tyree Nichols, who tragically lost his life due to the unethical behavior of five black police officers. But take a listen to this clip. And this is a story about young black men and their inability to treat each other in a humane way. Everybody involved in this on the street level was either 24 to 32 years old. Everybody. It was a group of young black men, five on one. Looked like gang violence to me. It, it looked like what young black men do when they're supervised by a single black woman. And that's what they got going on in the Memphis Police Department. They've elected some uh, or put some black woman in charge of the police force. And we're getting the same kind of chaos and disunity and violence that we see in a lot of these cities that are run by single mothers. Th th there, if we want to discuss the breakdown of family that leads to disrespect for authority, that causes you to resist the police and run from the police and not comply with the police because you resist authority at all time, because there was no male authority in your home. Let's have that discussion. But that's not Now for Jason to find the need to go this low with this very reckless deflection energy to an already grieving mother and Memphis community speaks volumes to his vile character and to his desperation for recognition and visibility and for some kind of carriage of respect that he will never get in this manner. Now, unfortunately, the Tyree Nichols situation is both unique and more of the same, where five black police officers, police officers turned community bullies, who were in a position to be exemplary pillars of masculine leadership and protection, instead decided to violate the human rights of a Mr. Nichols, and who decided that it was a good idea to unnecessarily abuse their power over another human being by using him as a punching bag to the point where it carelessly led to his unfortunate death. And thankfully, in true accountability and leadership fashion, thanks to a black woman, they are rightfully facing the swift consequences of their actions. And sadly, this very energetically weird reject leadership from broken men like Jason Whitlock keeps rearing its ugly head in situations where healing 
and leadership would prove to be more beneficial. And this has been an ongoing problem that I personally feel that only other black men of a certain stature of wealth, respect, and admiration can effectively address with other black men. Otherwise, these bitter clowns will unfortunately do whatever it takes to keep the gender divide gravy train going. Now, of course, from a feminine perspective for Jason to politicize and to deflect this already highly inflamed and collectively humiliating and painfully embarrassing and emotionally heightened situation speaks to how vile and how desperate that this 55 year old shell of a miserable man who more than likely did not have a lot of girls liking him growing up and who probably has more than likely been teased and bullied and rejected a thousand times over and who at his big age is blaming baby mama culture but in the same breath who doesn't have a wife so he isn't a provider husband he isn't a provider dad and he is clearly a middle-aged man that absolutely no one really looks up to so of course mr salty beans and his strong reject energy is going to project and deflect so that you the watcher are so offended and distracted by his intentional jedi mind trick that you don't get to see him for the insecure wimp that he truly is. Now, it is no secret that the black woman's image has historically always been used as low-hanging fruit and as easy pickings and has always been maligned and has always been used as the masculine face of strength, which I will admit has powerfully backfired in our community and has caused all kinds of hidden and open resentments. And because the black woman is often resented for her power and for her ability to adapt and survive unspeakable challenges, she is also often used by weak black men and the toxic women who raise them as the world's greatest scapegoat. And this devaluing of the black woman's image goes as far back as the Reaganomic days of the black woman being marketed and sold as the image of the welfare queen and the financial drain on the system and the boogeyman for all things dysfunctional. From the welfare recipient to the welfare queen and now baby mama culture as the oversimplified reasons as to why the black family and the black community by extension is in the shambles. Now for house cleaning purposes and for my ear hustlers, you are allowed to listen to whomever you want to listen to. You are allowed to be led by whomever you want to be led by. But when a person speaks in sweeping generalizations by saying things like all black women are this, all white women are this, all mixed people are this, all black men are this, all married people are unhappy, all single people are bitter. Those kinds of extreme absolute statements are always a sign of an unhealed person who is using their unhealed blueprint as a broad paintbrush for their own unresolved but her issues. But for the people who agree with Jason Whitlock, who feel that he brought up a necessary point that needed to be said, and who feel that using the reckless death of a civilian to take an insensitive parting shot at baby mama culture, first off, it was a reach and a backstretch. But how does Jason know that these five officers don't have fathers? Secondly, Mr. Nichols has a grieving stepfather at home. Thirdly, the police chief, Chief Serilyn Davis, who was the boss of these five embarrassing clowns, is a married woman and a mother of one. And many feathers will be ruffled to hear this, but Jason Whitlock represents a continual blind spot, particularly in the black community that is starving for leadership, where we confuse call-out culture for in-depth analysis. And when it comes to outspoken voices, our community tends to have a blind spot for both men and women who are speaking from a broken, insecure place, as these are the people who almost always never offer solutions. And our community tends to confuse masculine leadership with any loser who is bold enough to be a blame shifter and who is bold enough to be intentionally offensive and triggering and hurtful and humiliating only to keep circular and redundant conversations going. Ladies and lurkers, call out culture is not masculine leadership. This is mighty mouse culture. True masculine leadership will always focus on a blend of accountability and solutions. This is what makes a man a man as opposed to the mice who choose to weaponize their voices in order to inflict and trigger constant pain. And in Jason Whitlock's case, this is wrong place, wrong time pain that is completely out of pocket and is completely out of order. And ladies, a man who focuses on betterment, improvement, and moving the needle forward 
are all signs of healthy masculine leadership. Because when zero solutions are being offered, it sets the stage for damaged people. And there are so many damaged people in the world to become even more damaged and in many cases radicalized instead of doing what a true leader is supposed to do and that is to make their community better. And instead of Mr. Whitlock being on some stupid type of time, one solution would be to possibly start up a foundation where you locally sign up the most commendable and vetted black men to be father figures to boys who have been abandoned by their no count fathers. And yes, there are tons of issues in the black community that need to be spoken to and addressed. But to my listeners, please know the difference between a person who is more interested in fanning the flames of dysfunction and a person who is committed to misunderstanding the situation and using sad face deflection tactics, smoke signals, and the spirit of confusion as an oversimplified way to unpack what are very complicated and complex issues like self-esteem and socioeconomic issues. Now, to my single mothers who are listening, get your sons a proper mentor and teach your sons how to look in the mirror for answers. And for self-protection purposes, please continue to protect the fragileness and the delicateness of your femininity and your feminine softness and never trust a person, whether man, Mitch, or woman who wants and who needs you to be just as miserable as they are. So that is all that I have to say on this for now. Jason Whitlock should be ashamed of himself for both exploiting and deflecting the pain of Tyree's family and the pain of the Memphis community by deflecting the struggles of the community onto the women who in many ways have kept the community going in spite of being abandoned and stranded by the men who are supposed to protect them. And I pray that he can go get the self-esteem help that he so desperately needs instead of choosing to be irresponsible with his gifts and his talent. So ladies and lurkers, to get this conversation started, was Jason Whitlock out of pocket? And why are single mothers and by extension black women blamed for everything? And has your feminine journey protected you from the constant abuse of being thrown under the bus by feminine petty men. And as always, please like this video if you care and please stay tuned for more videos to come and I will catch up with you ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers in the next one.